Have you ever taken out a package of wild game from the freezer and looked forward to throwing something on the grill only to find that it's completely freezer burnt and ruined? Or found some mystery meat package at the bottom of the freezer that turns out to be some ducks you shot three years later? Well, today I'm gonna to show you how to preserve your harvest from the field safely and deliciously and easily. So stay tuned on this edition of Trey Runs Wild for canning venison. To get started today, we're just gonna use a few simple and specialty tools. And I'm gonna show you how easy it is to preserve your harvest for up to about 18 months safely. So first off, I just wanna talk about canning. Uh, what I have here is a Presto pressure canner. And uh, I actually have a weight gauge, but it's over by the, the stove. I have a dial and a weight gauge on mine. I have a safety valve here and a release valve here. This is a locking lid. And as you can see, I think I can put uh, nine pints in this or seven quarts. Anytime you're gonna process a low acid food, certain vegetables mostly, uh, other than like tomatoes or making pickles, things like that. Anytime you're gonna preserve meat, certainly you need to use a pressure canner, a water bath canner will not come up to high enough temperature to kill the harmful bacteria. So a couple of other items is just a, a plastic spoon, an old chopstick, a magnetic jar lifter, or lid lifter, and the jar lifter. Also we have a funnel, which I may or may not use today, depending on how small my chunks are. Also we have preserving salt and pickling salt, a fresh box of pint jars, and of course my nice lean venison that I just cut off the haunch this morning. Sometimes in the fall when I'm processing my own meat, I get tired of it, it gets to be a tedious process, and rather than uh, doing a sloppy job and leaving fat and trim on there that I'm not gonna want later, uh, this particular time I froze the entire haunch and have thawed that over the last two days in the cooler and it's nice and cool and clean and ready to get canned. So, fasten your seat belts, let's can some venison. So I've put about two, maybe three, I might put another uh, little bit of water in here. As you can see, I do have a, a rack on the bottom of my canner. This keeps the jars from being in direct contact with the bottom of the pan and the heating element uh, will help to avoid breakage of your jars. Uh, so probably about three inches of, of lukewarm water I'm gonna put in here and then I'm gonna turn the oven on to low. I don't want the water to be too hot since I'm using a raw pack method for this canning today. If you put the cool jars into the hot water, you can have some breakage. So I'm just gonna go ahead and take the rings and, and lids off of these jars. Like I said, they are brand new, uh, but I do wanna warm up these, these lids a little bit. Uh, on the stove right now, I do have a small pot of water that I'm gonna be bringing up to uh, just below a simmer. Uh, I'm gonna put these lids in here, and all it does is it, it warms up this gummy seal and helps to provide a better seal for the jar. You're not sterilizing these, and we'll talk about that later on. Uh, but for now, I'm just gonna go ahead and, and take all the lids and rings off of the jars and go ahead and put the lids into uh, the warm water. Go ahead and cut your meat into one inch cubes and then put them into the jars, leaving about an inch of headspace. I am going to put uh, a teaspoon of salt in each jar. It's not for preservation, it's merely for flavor for end product. It's recommended by the University of Minnesota. That's the guidelines that I am going by today. Um, the important thing is to make sure that your tops of your jars are nice and clean because it can prevent a seal during the canning process. When it comes to, to uh, foods that have fat, I do like to use a vinegar-based uh, 
either uh, apple cider vinegar or white vinegar on a rag just to uh, kind of break down any fat and kind of break through it. As you can see, there's just a little piece of meat there that was on my jar lid and that is why you do that. I'm just going to go ahead and put our lids on each jar. And some people will forego this step and when you're water bathing, you will, you'll often, it's recommended to sterilize your jars and your lids and rings. The nice thing about pressure canning is you don't need to sterilize your jars. They just need to be clean. And the reason for it is if you're bringing the product up to temperature enough to kill any pathogens or bacteria in the food product, then it kind of goes without saying that it's gonna kill anything that's on your jar lids as well. Once you've got your lids on, you're just gonna go ahead and put your rings on. Finger tight, don't over tighten. If your jar needs to expel gas or liquid, it needs to be able to do that, otherwise you can burst your jars. So just nice and finger tight. So my water in my pressure canner is probably, I would say, warm. The water is actually a little bit warmer than it probably should be in here. You want to try to keep your jars from touching each other. If at all possible, it will help to eliminate breakage. And I have the lone oddball. I wonder if I can fit that in. Okay, so all of my jars actually did fit in there. They are a little bit tight. Uh, you generally don't want your jars touching. I'm going to kind of take a little bit of a chance here and hope that I'm going to be okay. Uh, one quick thing that I do like to do is I like to hit the lid of the canner with a little bit of olive oil. I do have a rubber gasket on the outer lid of my canner and it just helps to keep it from sticking. So we're going to go ahead and put the lid on and we're going to bring this up to temperature slowly and we're going to let the vent steam out of here for 10 minutes before we start our timer. Okay, we've been exhausting steam consistently for 10 minutes. As you can see, the relief valve is up and what we're going to go ahead and do is put our weight on our steam vent. All right. So at this point, we're going to bring our temperature up to 11 pounds of pressure as recommended by the University of Minnesota Extension because I'm only at 1100 feet. I do like to go to 12 pounds of pressure. It gives me a little bit of leeway if my temperature drops. If you do drop below 11 pounds per pressure, you have to start your time all over again. So that's kind of what I need, like to do. A little bit higher, one more pound will not make a difference on the finished product. Okay, as you can see, I have reached 11 pounds of pressure, so I'm going to go ahead and turn my temperature down on my oven, and I'm going to start my timer for 75 minutes. And as you can see, it's creeping up. It's going to be about 12, which is okay. When the timer goes off, all you do is turn off the heat on the stove and you let it sit there until the pressure has come all the way down to zero and the release valve has dropped down. Do not open it. The jars will still be boiling even after the pressure is out. And uh, we'll see you in 75 minutes. As you can see, I'm up to about 13 pounds of pressure. You want to keep an eye on your gauge you don't want it to get too high. You know, the one thing about pressure canning is I used to be afraid of it. I was afraid I was going to blow up the pressure canner or blow up my kitchen or die from botulism. So I stuck to water bath canning with pickles and salsa and beets, pickled beets, those types of things. But once I learned how to pressure can, it's actually super simple and super easy as long as you know your recipes for your time and your pressures. So anyway, I'm just going to sit here, put this into a video, continue to watch it. I have turned down my temperature to about 4, so I'll make sure that it doesn't drop too low and get below uh, 11, certainly. Okay, my pressure has returned to zero. I'm going to go ahead and take off my 
weighted gauge. And my the big thing is even after it turns to zero, you want to make sure that your um, release valve drops down because then you know the pressure truly is is uh, down to zero. So when you take this cover off, you want to lift the lid away from you because a lot of steam is going to come out. I'm kind of working under a small space here. The, ooh, that's hot. I gotta put the phone down. So I've taken these out of the canner, and as you can see, they're still boiling. They're really hot. You want to keep them out of any drafty areas, or with the extreme temperature change, you could actually smash the glass and lose the contents all over your cupboard. So you want to listen for that pinging as the jar is sealed. It's like a little pop, pop, 